Okay, here we are now in the back in my garage. Uh, I'm going to go get a pair of dikes or wire cutters and I'm going to clip this. Then we're going to take this outer race out. And just clip pretty much two sides, bend that down. And we can pop those two bearings out. And you should be able to clip that bottom. And once you have that clipped, you just pull the cage and all the bearings will fall out. Here are the bearings right here. That is part number right there. These are from Nissan. I do like to take them out just to make sure they are the right ones. And they seem to be. Now, on these, there are a few ways you can take these off. You can press them off, or you can cut it right here like a die grinder, and then take a chisel once you have that, and hit it, and it should crack this right here enough to where it'll release. We got the bearings off. I had to use the method of cutting them and hitting them with a chisel right here. Now when we go to press these on, there are no shims underneath it. Sometimes you can get some that have shims underneath it. That we're going to Set it on there and then we're going to use the old one to press on because if you don't you'll press on this cage and you can bend it. But I'm going to take it over to my press. I'll bring y'all with me and I'll show y'all uh, what I'll do to press it on and how I'll do it. And uh, that way everybody knows. Alright, so like I said I'm going to use this old race to press the new bearing on. Right here you can see I had to take the ring gear off because it does hit uh, up in here a little bit because it sits so close to the pin in there. So you will have to take the ring gear off. And I would say chase the threads. As you can see there's some Loctite in there. And I would recommend changing the bolts as well just as a safety precaution. But to get that pin out, I know the last part you saw was me trying to get it out. But I got one of my long, one of my long uh, punches stuck. So I had to take it out altogether. But here's the pin right here. It goes in right there. And you need to knock it out from the bottom side out this way. And then here's the pin. As you can see, it has the hole and it has the flat spots for where the uh, axles go up against and everything. <clears throat> but let me grab the old gears. Here are the old gears. As you can see, they did have some wear on them compared to the new ones. And then they have little spacer shims, like oil slinger type things on the back of the big ones. And then the little ones have these little spacers right here. But you can see the scoring on this where it was just moving too much and letting this spin. And that's probably from all the metal in there as well. 
like I said, I did clean this off already. I'm going to clean the ring gear off too, along with the pin. And these are, these are junk. But I just going to clean, I clean this off with brake cleaner because it's just easier for me to do it at the moment. And you can tell, kind of see some of the metal pieces that was on there. And I'm going to clean out the differential housing as well from the tubes all the way to the center section and everything just to make sure there's no metal in the uh, differential and then i'm going to chase the threads on these right here to get that out and get new bolts but uh, i'll get you the part number to these uh, spider gears because it took me a while to find those uh, let me go get the paperwork and show you the part numbers for this all right, there are the part numbers right here. So the top one is, so the first number is gonna be for these washers. The second number is gonna be for these right here. The third number is gonna be for the actual side gears. And then the last number is going to be the actual uh, big ears that the axles go through that have the splines. So the smaller concaved washer is that one right there. That right there is the bigger washer for the spline gears. That's the uh, pin gear right there. And that right there are the side gears for the axles. Like I said... I'll put it up there so everybody can see and leave it up there for a minute. But I'm also going to put it in the description so everybody knows how that they're in. I'll spin it around. Like I said, there's the pin holes right here. Here's your pin. We are going to go ahead and drive that back in. As you can see, the gears are in. They spin nice and easy. Also, I checked the ring gear, made sure that there was no wear, there was no chips or anything on the ring gear itself. Everything looked good. Now what I'm gonna do is kind of line this up. I'm just going to start two of them. Like I said, I got two of those started. I'm going to put it locked tight just a little bit on each one. Alright, now that this is started, what we can do, we can just kind of run these in. So we're going to torque these bolts now. They torque to 58 uh, foot-pounds. And then in the service data it says uh, turn an additional 31 to 36 degrees. But we're going to go in a crisscross pattern. So the final torque comes out to be about 150 foot-pounds. Right. Before I put it back in, I'm going to put some gear oil on these bearings right here, this one and that one, and then we're going to go and put it back in to the differential. This right here is the outer bearing race I pulled out of the differential. That's where a lot of the noise was coming from. The noise is coming from the spider gears as well, but this right here was probably a lot of the growl 
right there because the bearing on the outer bearing on the pinion was riding right here and causing it to growl sorry about that but we're getting her fixed now hopefully everything will be good after this uh, as you can see I got the bearing right here the new one I got the old one off here's the old race I'm gonna use this right here to push onto the top of the bearing just like I did on the carrier bearings I'm gonna do the exact same thing right there but I'm gonna go press this on here in just a second and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I'm gonna install the gears on the differential I got the bearing on and this is just something I like to do before I put it in that way the bearing isn't started dry you spin it and just add a little bit of gear oil around there just to get all the bearings and the uh, rollers nice and lubed you'll feel it whenever they start to get really lubed because it quit making a rattling noise and you'll feel it be a lot smoother when you start to turn it all right like say here is the old crush sleeve here is the new one right there I know I already showed the part number but just want to make sure everybody's got it all right so I went ahead and put the pinion in I didn't show me putting that in because it's a little tight underneath there and I'd been in the way of the camera but to get the flange on you have to tap on it a little bit with like a rubber mallet to get it to push that uh, outer bearing in because it is tight on the pinion but you tap it in just enough to get the nut on there and you can use a ratchet to push it all on together and then after you do that you have to tighten it down using some kind of tool to hold the flange and tighten it down till you get the right amount of uh, preload on there and the way you need to check that is with a inch pound torque wrench and I just use this, these little dial ones like this this is a gear wrench one and that is the part number to it right there but on this one it needs to be anywhere between 12 and 15 inch pounds and all you do is once you get the nut on there to where you, you just tighten it up a little bit at a time and then you rotate it and you watch where this moves so like this so if you're rotating it you'll see it move like that it needs it be anywhere between 12 and 15 now I did go a little bit tighter on this one I went to about 18 because it will um, once you drive it around and everything it will kind of loosen up a little bit and it uh, should go back down within spec after you drives it around for a little bit so right here we have the differential We've already put the spider gears in, as you've seen. This right here is the passenger side spacer, and this is the driver side. I want to install the unit in in just a second to show you how I put it in, because once you get them in, it's going to be tight to put it in due to the spacers, because it's going to want to engage with the pinion gear, and it doesn't want to move side to side too easy but I'm going to show you how I put them in like that and you just have to tap it in just a little bit with the hammer all right so I put the spacer in on this side already and here's the other one so I'm going to put this in first This can be a little tricky to get in, especially if you're on your back. After you get it in, I like to get a screwdriver and get the bearing race over as much as I can. And try to slide that in. All right. All right. 
thing is going in now. So we are at five thousandths. It calls anywhere between uh, three and six thousandths, and we are at five, so that is good. I know I don't have my caps on yet, but right now I just like to check it right here because it'd be easier than taking the caps back off. I know if these aren't pushed in, they will. It can change the. Um, backlash but we should be good right there i'll check it again once i put the caps on all right here are my caps uh i don't know if you can see that mark right there but that one right here goes on this side because i have it marked with one and then there should be two right there that go on that side I am using this 3 8 uh, torque wrench because I am limited on space being under the truck like this instead of on a lift. But I'm going to double check the torque on all of them. that is good right there i did clean out inside of here uh the oil that's in here now is from me lubing up a few things inside already but i'm going to clean up this surface right here get all this old rtv off and i'm going to see how easy this spins real quick Now that I got these torqued in, what I'm going to do, I'm going to check my backlash one more time, and then I'm going to go get the axles and put the new axle bearings on. Those are a little bit different, so I'm going to show y'all how to put those on and what the special tool you have to use to do it with, because they are, the way that they're made, they're totally different. They're just kind of like the Toyota wheel bearings, if you've ever done those.